gardeners welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be talking about how reptiles communicate with one another a lot of people think that reptiles are just deaf they don't have ears and they obviously can't speak so that means that they can't communicate with one another however reptiles actually can communicate with one another they are built completely different than humans so obviously they cannot speak and vocalize what they want to say, but they do communicate in other ways and it's very interesting, so I'm gonna get right into it in this video. So the very first way that reptiles can communicate with one another is actually called low frequency. This is my favorite of all of them and I actually wasn't even aware of this until recently, so I'm just like over the moon excited about this. But turtles can actually communicate with one another very similar to how whales do underwater through low frequency. Turtles were always believed to just be deaf because obviously they do not have outer ears. Turtles do have internal ears, but they are not very sensitive to many sounds. So turtles actually produce this very low frequency sound that can only be heard in the water by other turtles. The human ear cannot hear these low frequencies because they're just so quiet. So it works perfectly for turtles. And that's why this whole time humans just thought that turtles were deaf. So the next question that you may have is why are these turtles communicating? What do they have to say to one another and that's where it gets really really interesting. Through these low-pitched vocalizations to communicate with one another, scientists have theorized that baby sea turtles in their eggs rely on these vibrations and sounds in order to communicate and synchronize their hatching in order to improve their chances of survival. So this is really really awesome because as you guys may know, sea turtles have a very hard time making it to the ocean because a lot of other animals come in and swoop in and eat them. So this works because the baby sea turtles can make these little low frequency sounds to let the others know that it's time to hatch. That way a big group of them will hatch and then go out to the ocean and they have more chances of survival because there's more of them. So that way, if there are predators coming in and swooping in and eating them, Others will have the chance to get away and make it to the ocean and survive. Another really awesome turtle that has to be mentioned is the giant South American river turtles in Brazil. So these turtles are actually known to communicate to their hatchlings through these low frequency vibrations. This is a species that migrate together, they nest communally, and they hatch out in huge numbers. So because these turtles always do everything in a group movement, it works out great because the females will actually call to their young and the young will come to them and then they can always migrate together and it's just really interesting because the mothers actually do kind of take care of their babies and they stay together as a unit. So I'm like obsessed with turtles, so I just found this so interesting. I had no idea that they communicated in this way that's very similar to whales, and it's just so awesome. So the next and most obvious way that reptiles communicate with one another would have to be through their body language. So there are many different subcomponents to this group, so I'm gonna go through all of them. The very first one that I want to cover is head bobbing. So head bobbing is something that you see very commonly with lizards. If you own a bearded dragon, the chances are you have seen your lizard head bob before. So usually when lizards are head bobbing, it means that they are calling their own territory or they're trying to intimidate other males. So if you see a turtle doing this, it actually means something completely different. A lot of male turtles will bob their heads in the hopes to getting a female to mate with them. The next subcomponent of this group is waving. So this is a submissive action. So a lot of times people will see this happen with bearded dragons as well. So if a bearded dragon male is calling his territory and head bobbing, you may see another bearded dragon just go like this and wave and it means that they submit and they do not want to fight whatsoever and they're saying yep you're the tough guy i will leave you alone the next subcomponent is push-ups and i brought this up in a recent video because it was a defense mechanism but the knobtail geckos will do this with other geckos as well they will do the push-ups to appear more intimidating and call dominance is very similar to head bobbing only this is a push-up and the next form of body language is actually the flaring of a dewlap. So you will see these on anoles and iguanas. They're usually right under the chin and they will just kind of flare out. So this is just another way to appear more dominant, to make the other males leave them alone. For anoles, it's to make the other males just flee away and submit immediately. So it's really interesting to see them do this and that is a form of communication. The next form of body language is tail waving. 
So this is something that I have seen in my own personal experience because I had a leopard gecko and an African fat tail gecko. It was the day I brought Mango home. I put her in a glass enclosure right next to my leopard gecko and she immediately started tail waving. So when an animal is waving its tail, it's usually a form of a distraction for the predator or other animal that they're communicating with because they're scared and they're intimidated. So they want the animal to focus on their tail so that way the predator will leave their vulnerable body alone and they have more of a means of a way to escape. So leopard geckos do this and African fat tail geckos and it's something that you will see very commonly with them. I'm sure there are other lizards that do this as well, although I can't really think of any on the spot that do tail waving as a form of communication. And the last subcomponent of this group is appearing to be larger. So this is another thing where you're kind of trying to be more dominant and you're showing that you're bigger in order to battle other males. And this is something in particular that snakes do. So snakes will literally try to appear taller than one another and just stand up completely straight. And the one that's taller will be more dominant. It can lead to combat and they will fight. Snakes are usually doing this as a way to communicate that they want the female, so they're battling another male just to win the female. Whoever's taller, bigger, or wins the fight, obviously would get the female because they're more dominant. So the next form of communication is actually changing colors. So you guys know that I have to talk about chameleons for this because obviously it's what they do, it's what they're known for. So chameleons do change color in order to communicate with one another. A lot of people think that chameleons just change color in order to camouflage, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. They're normally changing color as a way to communicate. That's like the number one thing for them. So the things that they need to communicate are usually the males are more brightly colored and they have these bright colors in order to attract females. So they will change their color if they see a female around just in order to attract her. They will also change colors in order to intimidate other males and then possibly combat them also to win the female. And there are other lizards that do this as well. Um, there are so many different lizards. The males are usually brighter colored than the females and that is always because it's a way for the male to attract a mate. So the next part of communication is actually sound. So obviously reptiles cannot speak, but they can make sounds in order to communicate messages to other reptiles. And some reptiles actually can vocalize and make sounds in order to communicate. So you'll see this a lot of the time with certain geckos. Lichianus in particular, they are known to make so many different vocalizations and they do this when they're mating or trying to find a mate and it's a way that they communicate with one another. You'll also see it commonly with gargoyle or crested geckos. The king cobra is known to make a growling or hissing sound with a lower frequency when they communicate with one another. Um, other snakes can obviously hiss or make rattling sounds like a rattlesnake in order to let the other snakes know what they're thinking and what's going on to leave them alone or if they want to battle another snake for a female. It's all pretty much the same stuff. And the last way that reptiles can communicate with one another is through chemical communication. So if you are familiar with reptiles, you probably already know about this, but the Jacobson's organ is how many reptiles can taste their surroundings and smell their surroundings to know what's going on and it's also a way that they can communicate with one another. So you'll see this with a lot of snakes and lizards as well. Even a bearded dragon, they're known to stick their tongue out to kind of taste their surroundings and obviously the forked tongue of like a tegu or any type of snake, they're using that Jacobson's organ to sniff and taste their surroundings in order to communicate and understand what's going on. So a lot of reptiles actually spread chemicals known as pheromones. Pheromones are a way to detect the gender, age, and condition of reproduction of other reptiles that may have been around. So some lizards can excrete these pheromones through their legs and they'll just kind of leave it behind and then another lizard may come up and taste the surrounding and understand more about the animal that was there before it. Um, snakes will do this as well. Snakes have very well developed vermonasal systems that allow them to smell and taste through their Jacobson's organ. So this is a way for snakes and lizards to find mates and understand their surroundings more and it's a way for them to just communicate with one another so that way they can know what gender the other animal is, what reproductive state it's in, and how old they are, which is very interesting because obviously they can't communicate that through vocalizing, so they do this through chemical communication and it's so interesting and so awesome. 
And those are five of the ways that reptiles can communicate with one another. So they are very different from humans in the way that we function because they do have different functions than us, such as the Jacobson's organs. So it's very interesting to learn how they're able to communicate and survive in the wild and find mates and be able to reproduce. It's just very, very interesting. So I had a lot of fun researching this and a lot of fun making this video. Um, let me know what you guys think about it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.